Hey, Brian Losey here, Priority One Fishing, and welcome to our second ice off location. Uh, this is Strawberry Reservoir, and we're about a week after the last video we did uh, on Schofield, and the ice is receding up here. We're just under 8,000 feet. We're gonna give it a shot. The weather is not much better. I say it's been snowing all the way up here. Um, wind is howling. Uh, it was a little lighter uh, a few minutes ago, five, 10 mile an hour winds, but it's ramped up, and I think we're 15, 20 mile an hour winds now. So um, we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna see if we can put a few fish on camera there for you. We're gonna try a couple of different techniques, some slip float rigs this time. Uh, didn't get to do them last time. And uh, we're gonna talk about that marabou jig a little bit more and some of the gear and tackle that we're using uh, to catch these fish. So hopefully a few fish on camera, a few more on camera than last time. I did bring the wind screens for the cameras this time, so we should have some audio that we can, uh, we can use and uh, should be able to make a good video for you. So stay tuned, catching a cutthroat here, maybe some rainbows. We'll find out. Strawberry Reservoir, ice off conditions. Let's get out, let's catch some fish. <laughs> Right, let's see if I can hold the camera here and talk about the concept of a slip float. So as you saw, we caught a fish just a moment ago on that slip float rig, and it can work really well when you've got moderate amounts of wind. I mean, we've got about a, a five, six mile an hour wind right here. I mean, it's snowing, it's cold out here, but uh, that wind is helping us with the slip float rig. So it's uh, something similar to what you see a lot of anglers use for panfish applications. Um, I like to use a little different style float, a little heavier float, um, and we're using a tungsten ice jig. You can see right there. So just a little uh, five millimeter tungsten ice jig and a little piece of night crawler on that. And I run about, uh, you know, for these cutthroat with these teeth that they have, I'm gonna run about eight pound test line. I mean, you could run a six definitely. Um, but I like to have a little more knot protection, a little bit more line protection there from their teeth uh, with that diameter. And then I'm using this uh, Little Joe pole float. And this one is a weighted float. This one has a half ounce weight, uh, kind of a counterweight down towards the bottom so that it stands straight up and it's got a high vis uh, detector. And the reason I like the pole floats is uh, surface tension. I mean, you can see these are only about maybe uh, five eighths of an inch around or thick. And uh, having that small diameter actually helps with those fish break the surface tension when they pull the float under the water. Now this float is uh, free sliding up and down the line. So we can get it here. Yeah, see, so, you know, it slides right down to the jig, so it makes it easy to cast. And then to control my depth, we're using a little thread stop right here. So that thread stop is just a little uni knot um, with some, you know, heavy uh, cotton thread and, or Dacron. Yeah, and we can tie that down on this line and hold it on there pretty tight, but we can move it to adjust our depth range and control uh, where our jig is positioned at in the water column. Now, to prevent that uh, float from going over that knot, I have a small bead right here as well. So as you build the rig, you're gonna tie on your knot, you're gonna slide on a bead, you're gonna slide on the pole float, and then tie on your jig and adjust your depth. So let's see if we catch a few more fish out there, and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some other uh, tips, uh, techniques that I'm using with the uh, marabou jig as well here in just a moment.
absolutely just annihilated that jig. Clear down his throat. There, oh, that's where the head was. <laughs> awesome. That's what we're out here to catch. <laughs> Another beautiful cutthroat. Oh, I hope this audio comes out in this, this wind. Just like our last trip, this wind is a howling, but that's what's getting those fish to eat. And we're getting some nice ones. A little bit bigger rainbow. All right, got that one out. There's a fish that just kind of rolled right there. And yeah, let's take a second and I'll show you this uh, jig that we're using. So I talked about it in the, even the last video about black marabou jigs at ice off, and they can be absolutely phenomenal. In this case, because of this wind, and I probably should have done it last time, is I went to a three eighths of an ounce jig head. Uh, rather than uh, using the quarter ounce so that I could control my cast in the wind, but even more importantly, the fall rate. A lot of times uh, how fast that jig actually moves through the water vertically as you're pausing between those uh, retrieves can uh, provoke those strikes. That seems to be working today as we've caught <laughs> uh, literally every fish on this jig, nothing on that slip float yet, even though we've had a couple of hits on the slip float. But I'm using the slip float for another reason as well. I'm using it as a depth indicator kind of kind of see uh, you know how deep the water is uh, where I'm fishing so that I know how to retrieve this jig and I'm not snagging up at the bottom so you can see out there my float actually just hit bottom so I'm gonna see if I can get that on snag then we'll readjust a little bit yep so an indicator on that float when it hits the bottom like that is it'll just lay flat or a lot of times with this wind it'll just go underwater and just kind of sit there horizontally it was a fish it would be much more erratic and you wouldn't see that uh, that float uh, stay down like that I mean typically you'll see that float come up you'll see it go down you'll see it move you'll watch your line move plus you'll probably by that time already have the fish hooked and you'll see it on the rod as well so I'm gonna bring it up to about four feet now let's see what that does slack a little bit this wind does make it a little bit different difficult um, and uh, normally on a, like, in a windy condition like this I'm gonna be casting with the wind now we're fishing kind of crosswind on this kind of cover an area with the drift on that float but it's uh, it's, it's putting a belly it's putting some slack in the line and make it a difficult when we do get that those strikes to pick up that slack line to set the hook on the fish so let's we'll kind of watch it we'll see what it does but depth indicator I know that about 40 feet out there it's going to be Oh, about four and a half feet deep. So my retrieve's gonna be a little quicker in this area, I think, than what it has been in the other areas with that three eighths ounce head. And the other thing I could do is I could switch it up to that quarter ounce head and uh, probably not have to worry about it too much. Now, this is a reactionary type of response. I mean, yeah, it looks like food to the fish, but you're moving it relatively quick and these fish don't have a whole lot of time to see it before they strike it. So leader on this, I'm not too concerned about. I would like to have more of a, protection from those teeth than anything else not have to retie all the time so in this case I might have a fish out there there 
might actually just be a fish. We'll double check. I'm using 12 pound test. So 12 pound test line, you can get away with even 15 pound test. Usually don't do that unless I'm fishing an area that I know I've got some big predators in. Come back up, maybe it was a snag. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it. Well, let's get out there and see if we can catch a few more fish here. Oh, see, that wind is just ripping it. There we go, finally made contact with the jig. You see, I'm trying to keep the raw tip somewhat high, but I'm also trying to keep my line under the wind. So I'm keeping it about 10 o'clock position right here. Normally be fishing about 11 or 12 o'clock position with the raw tip. And I'm retrieving my slack down and then popping that jig about three feet or so on that retrieve. Every time I hesitate, you'll see that most of the strikes I get are gonna be on that hesitation when that, that jig drops. And this fall rate with this 3 8 ounce jig head, it falls pretty quick. Sometimes that, that dive right down into the water, down towards the bottom, those fish just react to it. So that's how I fish the jig for uh, ice off strawberry. In general, I mean, most trout, most lakes that you catch trout in, this will work really, really well for you. You may even adjust all the way to an eighth of an ounce, depending on uh, how those fish are reacting to it. now. It started out about 5 or 10 mile an hour and I think we're up around 15 mile an hour winds. This wind is just like a buffet table. We might be a little too far inside the point here but if we need to, we'll move out just a little bit. Okay, we went down to a quarter ounce black marabou now. Let's see if they uh, want to go for something a little slower. That way I can fish this thing without hitting the bottom at a much slower pace. See if we can get a response. It's also a little bit different style jig. This one has a 60 degree angled eye on it. It's a product made by VMC. And it's got more of like a swim head, I guess you could call it, versus a, a vertical eyelet. Rides a little different when you apply motion to it. Yep, there it is. There we go. <laughs> See, if I wouldn't have reeled up that slack, I don't think I would have got that fish. So it makes this uh, crosswind just a bit difficult with slip flows. You just gotta keep up on that line. I think we hit him fast enough, I don't think he swallowed it. But you can see, I don't know if you can see that on camera, how fast that float went under, how easy it went under. Just a little rainbow. Right in the news. On our slip float. Awesome. Beautiful little fish. Lots of pink. All the way up on his gill plate. Awesome, awesome. Go back and get bigger. All right, let's get a little bit more worm. Some of the areas that I look for other than uh, wind-blown points when I'm targeting uh, trout at ice off. 
is they look for these little bays, these back eddies, these, these areas where you get that current kind of mixing around with that wind. Kind of creates this uh, own lake inside of a lake, or some would call it spot on the spot, and it it works with the cyclic patterns of these trout. I mean, yes, we're fishing off the edge of this, and that might be some of the issues we're seeing with inconsistency and in seeing fish moving. But we're close enough to that bay, I think we're we're still picking up on those those edges. And when I say cyclic patterns, I mean these fish are, are moving in here just like they would in a river system. They're working a pattern and they're less likely to change depth on that pattern than they are to just change direction. Oh, not my line. Joys of wind. <laughs> so those patterns, all you really need to do is you just gotta stay kind of in the zone where those fish are moving. And eventually you're gonna see those fish come back around. Now, if you can find the, truly the spot on the spot, those fish will cycle about every 10 minutes. And then as an angler, I mean, you don't really have to, you know, worry about catching fish as much as you have to worry about keeping fish in the area with your attractors, your lures, your, your bait, your scent, whatever it may be that's keeping those, those fish kind of curious and you'll have another group of fish stack on them and then another group of fish stack on them. Eventually, you end up with a lot of fish in the area that are all competing for the same food source and you end up with a competition response even more than a food-based response. And those fish, uh, I mean, you just, you watch those fish numbers and those hook ratios and <laughs> catch ratios just go up and up and up. That's where you, you hear about people catching, uh, you know, 70, 80 fish out of this lake. I mean, it's, not uncommon to see that. Just it's all about timing and location and then getting your bait in the right spot. So we're close. And we found a good area. And these areas are pretty consistent throughout the year. You can catch fish in these areas all year long. Different techniques, different tactics. You know, fly rods, real popular fly rod destination out here too. Fly fishing destination. This is a lot of nice fish. There he is. A little slower retrieve. I got that one. Keep him buttoned. Not real big. Ooh, it's pulling. It's spinning there for a minute like a rainbow. Still think he is a rainbow. A lot of those cutthroat will just kind of nosedive on you. They feel quite a bit different. Oh, we got him in our line. He's out of the line. <laughs> yeah, pretty nice little rainbow. It's gotta be, oh, he's still in the line. Yes, he is. <laughs> a little blue, beautiful fish. I mean, look at that. A little bit bigger rainbow. See him on the release here. There he goes. Awesome, awesome fish. Ooh, there's a solid strike. <laughs> Hit the camera again. But he's feeling very rainbowy. Again. in my line again. Yeah. Line is just moving. Blowing, blowing, blowing. Another solid little rainbow. You can see it. Oh, there he is. <laughs> You're ready to say, you can see the ice uh, receding in the background. This bay's really opened up with this wind. Probably 300 yards to the edge of the ice. Hey, I didn't catch my line this time. We're just hitting rainbows. But it is fun. Look at the spots on that guy. 
tons of spots on that one. That's a cutthroat. Ooh. That's a cutty. Actually acted like a cutthroat. He didn't want to move when I set the hook. He still might be. He's got a lot of head shakes now. Nice fish. Not a bad fish. Yeah, it's a cutty. Nice cutthroat. Look at that. All the iridescence on him. Beautiful fish. And get him on hook. Just right in the nose. Just barely got a hold of that. And look at that sun. Shine off that purple, pink, awesome. Gorgeous fish. There we go. Another cutty. He had a relatively close too. That fish, it's a nice fish. They're all about the same size. Nothing really giant yet. This lake will produce some giants. Look at him. All just so beautiful. Look at that. I mean, just some crazy spots on him. There we go. Pick that up on the fall. acting kind of cutthroat like. And we got another fish. Oh shoot, lost him. <laughs> and lost that one too. Oh well, dang it. That's what you get for trying to catch a double. I didn't wait too long on him. It was down for quite a while. There is he. Did we get a cutthroat on a slip float? We did. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Slide him up. And we did not wait too long. Awesome. Right in the corner of the mouth. Beautiful, like halo spots on this one. Almost kind of a uh, tiger trout like. <laughs> There you go. 
Maybe we could take a minute and talk to you a little bit about the uh, rods that I'm using here, the reels. So the reel's a little bit older reel uh, first. This is a, a Quantum Tour Edition. It's a PTI-B, I believe. Maybe just PTI. <laughs> and uh, ooh, it is a pretty solid reel. It's a size 20 that I'm using. Aluminum frame, ceramic drag plate. So, oh, lost that fish, dang it. Uh, <laughs> Really smooth drag. You can hear that drag is coming off a little bit, and I've got it relatively tight. I probably should have loosened it on that fish, but it handles uh, this application perfectly. I don't need a great big reel for this. And I've got it spooled with a uh, eight pound test nano fill, Berkley nano fill. Um, this line is super slick. It's a microfilament line, uses the same Dyneema or Spectra material that you'd see in a braided line. It just hundreds of little microfilaments and uh, cast like dental floss. I mean, this thing will cast forever. I and mean, I'm only using a quarter ounce jig here, but I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> There's a little flick of the wrist and we're throwing at about 100 yards. So lots of, uh, lots of control with that too. The leader, again, a 12 pound test leader. We talked about that a little bit earlier, but uh, I've got it paired, this reel, to a Daiwa Ardito travel rod. And we just caught a fish on this. <laughs> Daiwa Dito, Dito travel rod. I'm actually using two of them here. Uh, the one I have the slip float on is uh, a seven foot rod. Ah, we missed him. Oh well, we'll check the bait. Uh, seven foot rod, and these are three piece travel rods. These are a uh, product that Daiwa makes. It's kind of an inshore slash heavy freshwater rod, but they do make some medium light versions. Um, they feel a little different. A lot of the re way they feel is due to the material they're made of. It's an HM45 bias weave. It's a multi-layered graphite. Gives you uh, lots of feel, lots of control. Um, acts kind of like a shingle construction when you set the hook into a fish. And what I mean by that is, uh, it's like flexing a shingle into another shingle into another shingle all the way down the blank, progressively uh, transferring energy down the blank and allowing you to uh, really feel every move that fish is doing and so you can adapt to that to prevent you from losing them. Um, the reel on this one is a, another Quantum, it's an older Quantum Catalyst reel. Um, for this application, these reels are perfect. Um, both of them are size 20s, uh, ceramic drags for low inertia startup. If you're looking for another good reel uh, for this type of fishing, I would look at the Fluger Presidents. I mean, uh, there's a couple other Fluger lineups, but that Fluger, uh, uh, Supremes that have the mag uh, magnesium frames and those reels will also have that uh, oiled felt drag uh, versus the ceramic plates like you see in these ones and those felt drags are th really the lowest inertial startup drag you can get and when we say inertia we're talking about using light lines and that fish lighting into the drag as soon as you set the hook and you don't want to compromise those knots so um, great options I mean these uh, travel rods come with a case for them too. They're three-piece rods and they're not, not terribly expensive. They're $100, $120 rods. I mean, they're good high-quality rods, um, but they, they will do just about anything you want for them. Um, I mean, any of these applications. That seven-foot rod again on the slip float and the other one I, before we got kind of interrupted by fish, is a seven and a half foot medium light. So I've got a medium rod here and a medium light. I really should have probably switched them. The longer rod with a slip float is usually the better option and a little softer tip will help with that uh, hook set. But uh, this is the way I had them rigged up, so I just kind of stuck with it. But great options, you know, get out there if you're looking for an outfit for this type of fishing. Um, yeah, check them out. I mean, they do the job for me, that's for sure. <laughs> there he is. Nothing quite like getting another fish on the very next cast. Scrappy little rainbow. See him flashing under the water there. Look at that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Silver, pink, all colors of the rainbow. Purples, blues, and gorgeous fish. Greens on the back. 
and super, super healthy. This cast feels like it's going to be a fish cast. <laughs> That isn't calling the shot, I don't know what is. <laughs> that cast just felt fishy. And this guy confirmed. The rainbow. Rainbows are now way ahead of the cutthroat. And that fish uh, decided to change it up. So we got him. And on the uh, bottom of the mouth, either that or it slipped while we were fighting him. There you go. There you go. There we go, on the slip float. Ooh. You see how smooth these drags are? <laughs> Feels pretty good. What do we got here? Besides a gorgeous cutthroat. See, the trick with these uh, slip floats is really keep your eye on them. And you won't ever have to worry about a fish swallowing the hook. I mean, look at that. Give him that little chunk of night crawler. <laughs> it goes. Awesome. Well, I think I'm going to retire the slip float. And just uh, cast a few more times with the jig. And I think we're gonna end up calling it a day. It's been a phenomenal day though. Can't beat it, strawberry ice off. Ooh, there he is. It's not a bad fish. Be about the same size as the others, but he put the brakes and stopped that jig in its tracks. A little longer. Uh, yeah, a little longer. Great big spots on this one. Good hand. <laughs> now that is what I call a fish to end on. Right there. That is a very nice cutthroat. Pushing 20 inches. Gorgeous big dark black spots. 
four inch fins. Can't say enough about it. Strawberry Reservoir Ice Off. <laughs> it's only gonna happen for a few more days, I think. All right, so there you have it. Uh, what a phenomenal day. Ice Off again, second trip this year. Hit two different lakes, Schofield here just a week ago. Now, Strawberry Reservoir. So, I don't know if you can see behind me, ice is receding, so you don't have much time. You should get out here, you should catch some fish. Uh, it is awesome, as you've seen, we've got quite a few cutthroat, uh, quite a few rainbows. Uh, so, the only, only thing I can think of is these rainbows are coming in because they're mock spawning, these triple eight rainbows. And they're up in here on these uh, gravel and sand flats and kind of intermixed with those cutthroat. But uh, we did catch quite a few rainbows, more so than we did cutthroat, but we got some nice cutthroat as well. Um, and it's, I, I don't know, I lost count. Maybe you were counting, you saw all those on camera. Um, but phenomenal, nonetheless. You don't need a whole lot of gear. Um, say, I wanted to bring a fly rod down, the wind just wouldn't let me do it. It was just a rough, windy, windy day. And we started out with snow, started out with wind. Now we got sunshine and the clouds were starting to peel away, but uh, the jig produced. So we uh, stuck with that black marabou jig. I switched it up once uh, to try uh, something a little different because this fish started shutting down a little bit, but then they picked right back up again. We did get a few fish on slip floats as well. Uh, we use that mostly for our depth indicator, but we did catch a lot of fish on slip floats as well, and that, that'll produce fish all summer long. So uh, you can fish that technique just about anywhere you want to go. Um, awesome day, though. Can't say enough about Strawberry Reservoir. Get out here before the ice is gone. Um, it is awesome. I say nothing quite like it. A, few, uh, a couple of weeks from now, uh, you're going to see boats on this lake. Maybe we'll be out there as well, start chasing some kokanee. But uh, we got some more videos that are going to be coming up on that as well, hopefully this season. Uh, get a bunch of those fish on camera. So if you like our videos, uh, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Like us on Facebook. Like us on Instagram. Check out our new uh, website, PriorityOneFishing.com. Um, watch those videos. I said we got a lot of playlists out there. So uh, let us know what you think and uh, what you want to see coming up in future videos. And uh, as always, tight lines. Thank you.